Welcome to a new video on my Home Automation Open Hub and Node-RED series. Today I'm going to show you how to build a garage door opener using the Sonoff Basic and using the standard EVLink application. For this change we are going to use the standard EVLink application and the standard firmware so not, we are not going to modify the program which is running on the Sonoff Basic but we will make some hardware modification to this device. Up until now there was not a simple and elegant way of controlling your garage door using any of the Sonoff products for mainly two reasons. And well actually there was a way because a couple of weeks ago I showed a product which is not manufactured by IT but they are also using the EVLink application. So you can have a special purpose designed garage door opener. But if you want to do something cheaper then there was no other way. Most garage door openers have uh, two contacts which needs to be shorted for a short period of time in order to move the garage door up or down. And it wasn't possible to simulate this operation with any of the Sonoff devices because of two reasons. The first reason is there was no option in the EVLink application to turn a device on just for a short period of time. Because uh, you know you had these uh, buttons on the on the screen, and then you clicked it, and it turns on, and then you click again, and it turns off. Theoretically, you can you know click it twice quite quickly to make the uh, uh, your device to send out a short signal. But if let's say there is a network lag, then maybe the signal wasn't short enough. And most garage door openers, if they receive this signal for a longer time, then they might stop a motor or they might just reverse. So once they're going up, they start going down or something like that. So it wasn't really foolproof. But now it is possible because uh, in one of the recent firmware updates, we are getting a new functionality in which some of the devices, for example, a Sonoff Basic, can be turned into some sort of uh, short toggle mode where you click the button on the application and it just sends out a short signal so it turns on and it automatically turns off let's say after half a second so this is really great this is something that we wanted for this particular application the other thing is as i mentioned the garage door opener has these two contacts and it expects that contact to be shorted so it doesn't need an external power supply or anything like that the Sum of Basic is uh, a device which is designed to switch the line input voltage to the output. So that would basically uh, give you know live and neutral on the two outputs, which would definitely destroy the uh, the garage door opener. So for that, we are going to do some hardware modification inside this device, so it doesn't route the input live power to the output. But having said that, there are a few other products. For example, the Sonoff, I think it's called the SV, and also the 4-channel, which does not route the main power out uh, to the output. They have separate input and output, so you could use those devices without a hardware modification. But, well, it's not going to be very difficult. But as I said, the main thing which allows us to do this now is the update in the software. To get to the inside of the Sonoff, basically just remove these end caps after removing the screw and you can separate the top like this and the inners pop out so we have the pcb here and uh, let me just check yeah so that's the input side as you can see you have the two terminals here let me zoom in a little bit if you look at the board here you can see that that's the that's the input side of it so live and then neutral and then that's the output side of it. So that's where you tap off the, the switch live and neutral. And if we turn the board over, then we can clearly see that the neutral goes all the way through and then the live goes all the way through via the relay. So basically what we need to do is we need to cut these lines in before it goes to the relay. So the relay switch, so the relay contacts don't receive the the live and also we don't route the neutral through and then basically co um, connect these two traces together so the the one contact comes in here goes through the relay and then goes back and have nothing to do here and unfortunately it's uh, well it's not going to be that easy it would have been much easier if this would be the input side because then we have all these traces here that we can easily cut but we need to cut it here very close to the relay 
but we also have to leave this one intact so the, the the live needs to go from here to here which goes to the circuitry to power the whole unit but then we somehow need to break it some somewhere like here so it's quite close to the relay and as you can see we have these fat traces on the bottom side but we also have you know normal traces on the other side of the PCB so they have to well both of them had to be cut as you can see I've used my Dremel to mill a slot to basically break these two traces here and as I said all um, these traces are on both sides of the board but if you hold it against the light then you can see the traces just to make sure that you are you know you're cutting them on both sides and also you are not cutting the leg of this uh, resistor and yeah that's it and I'm going to use my multimeter in continuity mode just to make sure that I've managed to break those traces obviously I did but well you better check it so that's fine and that's not connected either that was the most critical one because of that's clearly there is a, a gap here but here because of the traces go like that I wasn't sure if I managed to cut it all the way through and the the leg of the resistor is not broken and of course there's no continuity here and then this one still works and that one still works so we are done with the cutting and it was successful I also used a small file to um, clear any of the burrs at the end of the cut or at the edge of the cut just to make sure that it's nice and maybe I will just also put a tape in here well just for extra safety and now I have completed the rest of the mod which basically just a small bridge between this pin and the and this outer trace and I just used an, the off cut of a components leg like an LED leg or something we are going to use it for to open the garage door so that's not going to uh, conduct any you know great currents so a very thin wire like this is uh, absolutely acceptable and as you can see I've also taped down this side with a Kapton tape just to make sure that electrons can't jump this uh, gap obviously they wouldn't but well hey extra safety now it is ready to go back to the case and just to make sure that I'm not trying to switch my bad side lamp with this sort of which is obviously not going to work now I just put like a garage door into the case so I won't forget that this is a modded sort of basic. I'm not going to bore you with the setup process again or the pairing process. We have done it so many times before. But um, I have paired the device with the uh, EV-Link application as you can see. If I click then it turns off. If I click then it turns it on. Of course the button works. You can hear the relay kicking and then the whole device works. Which means that we have cut the traces where we were supposed to cut the trace and we didn't cut it anywhere else. If the device wouldn't be working, you might have disconnected the power from, the, from that resistor that I showed you earlier. So maybe you can, I don't know, resolder that or something like that. But as you can see, we only cut the power to the relay and not to the device. And I'm just going to make one last check uh, with my multimeter. So I have it connected in the voltage range and I'm checking mains voltage between the input and the output when it is turned on and there is absolutely nothing yeah so basically there is nothing and if I check in continuity mode then there is continuity on the output and if I turn it off there is no continuity so it is working as designed the last thing we have to do is to do that last initial setup and by the way this is quite an old sort of uh, basic so when I paired it and I came to the device settings it had a really old firmware I think it was 1.6.0 so I updated to the latest firmware and once you have done that you go out of settings and then you come back to the settings and now you can see that there is this uh, mode here which says itching I don't know why it's called itching but hey ho and if you turn it on then what it means that when you turn it on it will only turn it on for well half a second that's the default setting and I think half a second is going to be just fine for the garage door opener so that's one of the new features I can see some other new other features as well but probably we are going to talk about it a little bit later so if I go out now the device is off if I turn it on as you can see it was only on for half a second then it turns automatically off and that's exactly the function that we need for a garage door opener and it works exactly the same way from the button as well 
you could hear the two clicks it came on and then it goes it has gone off so we don't have to mess around anything with the schedules or the loop timer it is just a new functionality and it's great because even with the loop timer the smallest amount that you can set is one minute which is you know way too long for a garage door opener so i think we are ready to install this i have installed my new garage door opener just temporarily so it's basically sitting on the top of the the garage door motor as you can see it's uh, right on the top which is where is it here and you can also see the uh, the previous HN garage door opener that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago which is still there I just disconnected it for this uh, uh, particular exercise and um, and there is this orange lead which is providing the mains uh, for the sonoff because I only have one plug there so I need to just you know rewire that to have two plugs so it is all connected the sonoff is connected to the wireless network and if I click the door comes up you can't see that but in a couple of seconds you will see the the door appearing or maybe not yeah, you can see that coming up there. So the garage door is open now, and if I click the button again, it goes down. Wonderful. It's as simple as that. Thanks for watching, and hopefully, see you in the next video.